hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza Horizon 2 with another rally car build. My vehicle today, it is the Renault Clio V6. Now, there haven't been very many hot hatch rally car builds uh, in this series. The reason being, front wheel drive cars converted to four wheel drive don't work. Something messes up in the handling, they become very, very hard to drive, as we saw with the Duke. When, uh, when I took that around, it just doesn't really work. But the Clio V6 being rear wheel drive, well, we have no handling issues uh, when we convert them to four wheel drive, is an interesting prospect, certainly. Now, there is still a handling concern. While it won't be the conversion of drivetrain, drive lines, whatever, that will be the problem, my concern with this is the mid engine tiny wheelbase. Now, we saw mid engine tiny wheelbase in the Metro 6R4, and that was a horribly, horribly twitchy thing. But, uh, yeah, that is, that is the concern, but we'll have to uh, see what happens with this car. Rules for the series, where we've got to make it four wheel drive. It actually drops the PI in this car, increases the weight a little bit. Uh, but we're starting off at 3,200 pounds, not too bad. Uh, when we put on weight reduction, we'll get it down to a, a sensible weight for the Clio. We must also have the uh, Storm Island off-road tyres, which is again, we've got a plenty of PI to work around with parts, which is uh, which is always quite nice. The uh, off-road gearbox for some nice sensible gear ratios, and finally the off-road suspension to survive the bumps and the jumps. Although this Clio is really low, even with the off-road suspension, this is. I mean, this is kind of getting almost to the Ferrari F40 Mercedes Black Series sort of levels of ride height going on here. I'm surprised by that. Uh, it really, it's with the race suspension, yeah, it's pretty much just scraping the floor. Okay, we may have the odd issue with ride height. Uh, is it is, yeah, it's, it's very low. I mean, we can normally get away with it. The concern really with suspension is more how it will deal with a few of the bumps that could potentially cause issues. Um, okay. Brakes. We're going to be going for all of the handling parts with this car. Uh, we've got plenty of PI to make it up to uh, the S1 class. Uh, do we go for a roll cage or not? How much? Uh, we only had 90 pounds. I think we might want it on the Clio. It's a little bit of an older car. I'm I'm going to go for it. Uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's probably a good call with that one. With the Race weight reduction is only down to 2,800 pounds. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than I was expecting, to be honest. This is about the same weight we saw the R34 Skyline. I think we might be able to get it down a little bit less than that, but, uh, hmm, okay. Uh, what I'm going to have a look at, what engines do we get? Oh, <laughs> I, I was expecting things like maybe a tur the turbo rally engine or maybe some other alternatives, but no, it's just, we could go for the, uh, the V8 Clio. Uh, in fact, that's the Ferrari V8. I was expecting that to be the... Um, the normal 6.2, I just realised that's the Ferrari V8 that we could put in it. Uh, no, we're not going to go for the Ferrari V8. As tempting as it is, I'm surprised that actually keeps it in S1 class. As tempting as it is a Ferrari V8, we're not going to go for that. Uh, we can go turbocharged. I think I will probably go turbocharged with the Clio, though. And if we're not going with the Ferrari engine, it's probably a, a good idea. Tyres, let's have a look at these. We may actually get some interesting tyre widths on this car. We get... 285s at the rear. Um, so we've got the same size rear tyres as we saw on the R34, as we saw on the Nissan 300ZX. Uh, not quite as big as we got on the Metro, but uh, they are still some some pretty hefty sized tyres. We're going to get on the front. Uh, yeah, 235s. It's uh, a little bit smaller on the front. The likes of the, uh, certainly the R34, we had equal. It was 285s all around, if I remembered correctly. So this one, we may yeah, we may have a potential little bit of understeer. Uh, although this, this Clio is world renowned for having understeer from standard with all the interesting weight distribution going on in the vehicle uh we could have some understeer from this car i would prefer having understeer here than having oversteer with a car that i fear could be quite twitchy understeer would be easier to drive with uh we will be going for the aero parts of course i'm kind of hoping for a silly rear wing here we go what do we got we yes we have a silly rear wing <laughs> for the clio uh on, on a lot of the cars, Forza has got a lot more sensible with its rear wings, but now we've got the proper double, <laughs> the double spoiler. These things, I'm guessing, in fact, these things are heavier and I don't think reduce drag, so I don't don't see the point in that. And I'm guessing we, uh, this does reduce drag, but it is heavier. Uh, I'm not going to bother with them. We will keep with the just the Forza Aero parts, and now. For the rest of the car, see what we can get power-wise out of the engine. I'm I'm hoping we'll be getting a decent... I mean, if we got the Ferrari engine in here, well, I'm expecting we'll probably be getting well past the... 
uh, or up to the 500-ish horsepower mark. In fact, we have to go for all of the big engine parts by the looks of it to get it to the uh, to get it up towards the top of S1 class. Uh, we're not going to bother with the intercooler or the oil and cooling as per normal. They just add weight, don't add a huge amount of power. If it comes to a kind of let's see if we can. Uh, if we need like a couple of PIs, they might, well, I may uh, end up resorting to them. This is actually going to get a lot of power. I'm just seeing this this, this creeping up uh, <laughs> with the power numbers here. 557 horsepower in this Clio. That is a lot. We've definitely got more power out of this standard engine than we would have got from the Ferrari. Uh, V8, admittedly the Ferrari V8 would probably have sounded more impressive. But, uh, okay, so 575 with that, or 579 with that. Okay, we will go with the race fuel system. This is quite a powerful car. I I wasn't expecting to get almost 600 horsepower out of the Clio. I will be honest. That's not quite the... Uh, I thought we might be a little bit lighter than it is, but didn't think we'd be getting this much power out of the, uh, the Clio V6. Uh, we cannot get the clutch on. I am very, very highly doubting that we will get a flywheel on. Worth a look, but uh, no, we won't. We won't do that one there. Okay, so 580 horsepower near enough, 432 foot-pounds of torque and 2,700 pounds. Power to weight ratio, pretty damn quick. Uh, Tyres are okay, although not spectacular. I, I My fear is this is going to be twitchy and horrible. It, it could well be. It, if it isn't twitchy and horrible, if there is some good grip, we could be very, very fast. It is likely to either be twitchy and horrible or incredibly understeery. I'd much prefer the latter. Maybe there is a nice middle ground that the Clio is, uh, and then it could be really, very, very fast. But there is, of course, only one way to find out, and that is to take it around the Forest Brawl circuit, where I will have five laps to go as quickly as possible. Our current leader, the Ferrari GTO, sits at the top of the table with a 57 Point five second lap, and I doubt the Clio will be challenging that. Uh, the Metro is probably a, a good sort of target. The 6R4, 58.7 was the Metro's time. If we have enough control in this car, we could probably see it around that kind of region. Uh, the concern is, of course, the handling. What is the uh, <laughs> what is this crazy contraption going to do when it comes to a corner? Well. The, there isn't too much, actually quite a lot of oversteer from the, that's not what I was expecting from the Clio. There isn't, there isn't really understeer from this car, it actually gets turned in really quite nicely, which is good to see. Uh, we have decent enough grip through the turns. Uh, we're actually pretty damn fast on the acceleration front. How, oh, I don't really like it down there. That's less than, that's less than fun. Uh, Oh, good God, we're tipping across the bumps. There goes the back end. It's wanting to wiggle around. We don't have enough rear end grip in the Clio. Bugger. Uh, we are okay through the second to last turn. My, my fear is, as I kind of realised, it's we don't have the rear end grip, and if it starts getting away from you, trying to catch it when you have such a tiny wheelbase, and so much speed, uh, ends you in trouble quite a lot of the uh, quite a lot of the time. Okay, straight line speed should be mighty impressive. From, uh, from this car. Uh, uh, I got on the brakes a little early there, uh, but uh, I definitely think this is going to be a, a quick car for straight line speed. That's not really the uh, the issue with this. It's kind of fight the car through the turns. We're okay through turn two and up through turn three. The back end is just about playing ball. It's just about staying on uh, on the road. We can carry half decent speed through there. Uh, definitely going to be putting up into fifth, try and keep it all under control as we go across the bumps. Uh, just try and minimise that wheel spin as much as I possibly can from this. Uh, from this car up towards the second to last corner. How much speed can we dare take? Uh, you see you chuck it in there and the back end wants to come around and that just scrubs all of the speed off through that section. And we're also not quite as nice through the final turn as we have seen from some of the cars. Okay, my fears of it being twitchy that I thought we were going to have after that first lap, it's not quite as bad as I feared we could see from the uh, from the Clio. It's actually, yeah, it's... it's it's oversteery, certainly far oversteery than uh, than I would like, but it's not quite metro levels of death machine. Uh, <laughs> through turn one, you see get a big oversteer moment. Uh, through there, I'm trying to push the car more. I just don't think we have the ultimate front end grip in this. We just don't really have big enough front tyres to get it turned in, and then the back end is very very lively on uh, on this car. Oh god, on that bloody bump again on the landing, actually carried good speed 
didn't have to put it down a gear that time around. Uh, it was still, it, it's okay, it just struggles a little bit over that course, which is losing a little bit of time every corner, and I've completely fluffed up the second to last turn, and then we're stuck out really wide in the weeds. That's not where you want to be for <laughs> that section of track. Okay, a couple more laps, a couple more laps in the Clio to see if we can, uh, can get it any further. Faster. Uh, it doesn't quite like the main jump as much either. It struggles a little bit uh, over there. All right, let's see if we can. I definitely think it was about 130, 138, 137 miles an hour in a straight line. Pretty damn respectable. Uh, that only a couple of miles an hour off some of the fastest cars that have gone down here. You see, it just wants to move around through turn two. Up through turn three, if we get the line right, it is okay. And through turn four, we can carry, oh, we're carrying decent speed this time around, but it then does push out wide on the exit. We're tipping big time across the jump. Uh, probably didn't even need to bother changing gear. We're a little bit slow on, uh, on that one. We're out of position coming up to turn five, but we have managed to recover it. We're on for a half decent lap time. Uh, around this circuit. I don't like the second to last quarter at all in this car. It's just it's just not quite the grip. Out of the final turn, struggling to get that power down, but we are coming pretty quickly with uh, with this lap time across the big jump. This time we get it nicer still. Yeah, I think it's actually a little bit always too fast uh, cresting that uh, jump. It goes into the 58 from the, uh, the Clio V6 dive on the brakes. I'm not sure we can get it. Oh, I've overshot turn one. I tried to carry too much speed on the way in, and there's a tree on the outside. Ah, bugger it. I uh, don't think I could get much faster than that, though, to be honest. Oh, there goes the back end <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, yeah, the only one quarter that was dodgy that time around was... Uh, was the landing of this one, but it was actually still quite neat. While well, I lost a couple of miles an hour, it was still relatively neat through there. Even this time around, it wasn't massively fast. Oh, we're off towards the invisible wall. It's never a good thing to uh, to be have happening. This is it's not as bad as I feared it would be. Uh, it is the back end does like to step around. There isn't the tremendous amount of understeer that uh, you could perhaps have got, and it isn't as twitchy. It is twitchy in comparison to some of the cars that I have driven, but it's nowhere near the metro levels. Of, uh, of scariness and difficulty to uh, to drive, it's yeah pretty a pretty decent sort of all round overall car. Quite impressed with the uh, the Clio V6, a 58.872. It puts it into tenth place. It goes well fractionally fractionally like uh, what is it a hundredth of a second uh, or a few hundredths of a second sorry uh, behind the the King Cobra uh, beating the the Galant by about a tenth. It's uh, yeah, it's all very, very tight around that area of the table. Yeah, but a 10th place for the Clio V6 is definitely a respectable lap time. I mean, it's only a 10th slower than the Metro, uh, or there or thereabouts, which is not bad at all from the the V6. Yeah, not as difficult to drive as I feared it would. Certainly not the easiest car, not as not as consistent, not as easy to drive as like the Mercedes, the Volvo, the Aston Martin, but uh, that's perhaps to be expected from such a tiny wheelbase and such a huge amount of power. This is, yeah, got almost up to 600 horsepower is a lot in a little car like this, very fast in a straight line. It has its quirks through the corners, but yeah, it's it's not nowhere near as bad, nowhere near as scary as I feared the Clio might be to drive. But uh, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.